So to develop a habit, we will definitely need to work hard. If you look at Islam, it rotates around discipline. Allah wants you to get up at a certain time, do salah at certain times. Allah Almighty wants you to fast the month of Ramadan to discipline yourself. 30 days, I'm not allowed to do this and this. What's wrong with normal water? Nothing. It's not alcoholic, it's not haram, it's not something that has some ingredient in it that I need to stay away from. But Allah says, stay away from it, morning to evening. Why? Because I said so. And I will make it such that you'll enjoy staying away from it. And I will give you a reward at the end of the day. And I'll give you a reward at the end of the month. And I'll give you a bigger reward when you meet with me. That's a hadith. A person who fasts has a blessed moment at the time of iftar, farha. It's termed farha. Do you know what farha means? Happiness. Happiness about what? Well, a lot of us is just that I can finally eat. That's happiness, isn't it? It tastes much better than it did before Ramadan. I promise you because you're hungry. You know when you're hungry, things you never ate, you'd eat and say, mashallah, it tastes quite good, man. That's because there was nothing else there and you were so hungry. But on a normal day, you wouldn't even want to look in the direction of those things, right? You wouldn't know. I remember one day, I was very, very hungry and I had some beef, thinking it was beef, cooked at home. Turns out it was ox tongue. It tasted yummy, amazing. I wouldn't eat it again. Why? Because I found out it was ox tongue. I stopped. But it was so good, so nice. So what's the problem? I don't know. I just got a thing. Ox tongue, I don't want to have it. To this day, it's not like it's haram or halal, it's halal, without a joke. But if someone doesn't like something, no matter how tasty it is, or for whatever reason, I know one of my family members used to love, still probably loves to eat what's known as tripe. You know what's tripe? The lining of the stomach of the... Oh, whoa, I don't even want to say it. Say it? Allahu Akbar! <laughs> May Allah forgive you, my brother, and me. <laughs> but there it goes. Do you like it? You don't, then let me not say it, inshallah. Okay? But some like it, some said yes, isn't it? Oh, mashallah, see the elderly folk are saying yes, yes. Because they know, you see, they're healthy and they're a little bit older. It's full of nutrients, apparently. But so what? If, I mean, it might be tasting as yummy as it is, a little toweling sort of a thing before you cook it. And after you've cooked it, I don't know what it tastes like because I haven't yet tasted it. But I know people who love it. They would, oh, mashallah, yummy, yummy, and so on. When I was in Saudi Arabia, I saw them eating locusts. Literal locusts, selling them for 120 riyals a kilo. A kilo! And I'm like, gosh, come to Africa, we become millionaires, man. <laughs> mashallah, mashallah. Allah Almighty has created us in a way that when you get used to something, you enjoy it. You made yourself used to it. You got yourself used to it. Others may not be used to what you're used to. But bottom line, there are two things. That which Allah has made an obligation, you need to force yourself to get used to it. Without that, it's not coming. If you need to know, I need to achieve something before I meet Allah. Without you making an effort, it's not happening. Your, your body is made in a way that if you do not push yourself to achieve what you know is benefit, beneficial for you, whether it is for this world or the next or both, you will not be able to achieve it. إِحْرِصْ عَلَى مَا يَنْفَعُكْ وَاسْتَعِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَلَا تَعْجَزْ the Prophet says, work hard towards achieving that which is beneficial for you. Seek the help of Allah and don't be lazy. Go for it. Work hard again and again and again. I need to do this for the sake of Allah. I'm going to try. I faltered, I try again. I faltered, I try again. You try 50 times, 100 times. After that, it will become such a habit that you won't even let go of it. You won't even let go of it. It will become second nature. Subhanallah. So if something is an obligation upon you, make sure you do it for the sake of Allah, such as fasting, such as, for example, I'm talking of the month of Ramadan, such as, for example, salah, the prayer, such as giving. Some people become so attached to their wealth, they can't give. They can't give. And Allah says, the only way that you're going to get is to give. Subhanallah. You really want to get, you're going to give. If you're going to amass you're not going to get. Do you know why? It, there's quite a simple explanation to that. When I give to causes, I'm literally decreasing figure, the figure that I hold. But where is it stored? It's stored in the bank of the giver of everything in the first place. And he says to us, spend and I'll spend on you. So now that you gave, he needs to replenish. 
your entire system. He, do you reckon he's going to give you one for one? He's the Lord of the worlds, the most kind, the most generous. He's going to give you 100 for one. 700 for one. Minimum 10 for one. Come on. I'm going to deposit it in his bank, subhanallah. I'm going to deposit it in a cause that is pleasing to him. It's tough. It's hard. The hadith says, the hadith says, the best charity you can ever give is that which you give when you're fearing poverty but hoping for the mercy of Allah. Fearing poverty means, this is my last 100 pounds. Here's 20 pounds going. Allahu Akbar. What's left? 80. But I did it hoping that inshallah, someone needs it more than I do. I'm not a sahabi or a companion to just say, okay, I've just got 100 years, 100, you know, that's it. But at least I can give, instead of the 2%, I'm giving 20%. And here goes, may Allah have mercy on me. I'm reaching out to people who need more, for example. And then you watch what Allah does. Maybe not immediately, but there will come a time when, wallahi, you sit back. And if someone like myself gets up and reminds you, where were you and where are you now? Are you not in a better financial condition than before? How was your father, your grandfather and your great-grandfather? How were they? What was their condition? Could they afford even a fraction of what you can afford today? It, the answer in the case of the majority is no. So has Allah not blessed you? You now have, for example, things that they wouldn't have even thought of. Is that not correct? Where did it come from? Well, it came from Allah. He gave. People worked hard. People were charitable and so on. So to give, you need to push yourself. It becomes nature. The minute you hear of a cause, immediately you know, I'm going to give five pounds. I'm going to give ten. I'm going to give whatever I can. I'm going to give a hundred. Depending on how much you have, right? So to develop these habits, Allah has created us in a way that if you don't work hard, it's not going to come. Those who are fortunate are the ones whom from a young age, I was talking about childhood, their parents have instilled within them beautiful habits. Congratulations to you and your parents. Quran, people don't read Quran. We have a habit developing Quran app, for example, such as, who knows? Quran Lee, Quran Lee, habit developing. It's a beautiful habit developing app. It prods you, it gives you beautiful, you know, suggestions. It shows you some reward, reward in the sense that it's just working it out average. Allah alone knows the exact reward, but it's letting you know. It shows you others who are also reading in your circles and it helps you develop the habit. There comes a time when you no longer need it because you know what? It's your habit anyway. You no longer need it, but initially you needed something to push you. There are some or a lot from amongst us still whose parents inculcated it from a young age. Listen, every day we're going to get up for Fajr, we're going to read a beautiful story. You know, when I was little, my eldest brother had a habit. The habit was, gather us around after Salatul Maghrib and read from a book. Something to do with Islam. There was only one problem. He read and read and kept on reading and reading until we began to yawn. We were tired. Some of us fell off to sleep and that's why we developed a little bit of a distance and we tried to duck and dive because anytime he was looking for us to say, come, let's read. And we were like, nowhere to be found. In the bathroom a little bit too long or sometimes you're somewhere else. And used to, because why? You need to know the kids of today, they want two minutes, five minutes. That's enough. I mean, I'm going to sit here and talk to you half an hour, 40 minutes. I can't go on and on all night. People are going to say, we're sitting around the tables. There's water, there's cutlery. There's everything ready. And this guy's just talking and talking and talking. We're hungry, man. Right? You have to know the moment. But we, these habits were developed. So if you have two minutes of Quran every day in the home, the kids would come happily and you reward them for it. And as you help them develop these habits, Allah will give you paradise because you help develop the habits of your kids. And it becomes a sadaqa jariya each time they open the Quran. For the rest of their lives, even after you've died, you get a full reward because you're the one who developed the habit in the first place. That's why for us as adults or parents to help others develop habits, especially our own children, we achieve a reward that is unmatched, unmatched. And we continue receiving it even in our graves. And guess what? If they were to have children or to have circles of people whom they helped as a result of you helping them, the list is endless. It goes on and on and on. The generation after the generation for as long as they continue the habit that you started. 
And if it was started by your parent or grandparent or a teacher, then even going backward, they're all achieving a reward. Look at Allah. Look at how much of emphasis He's given us to develop good habits. Those who have parents who have done this for them, MashaAllah, congratulations to all of those. The parents, the children, and anyone who was taught in a good way. May Allah Almighty make it easy. My beloved brothers and sisters, as a Muslim transforming your life through habit change starts with aligning your actions with Islamic principles. The most fundamental habit to develop is maintaining a consistent connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through daily prayers. Establishing regular salah not only brings spiritual fulfillment but also adds discipline and structure to your day. Begin by being punctual with your prayers, making it the anchor of your routine. As you prioritize your relationships with Allah, you will find inner peace and a deeper sense of purpose guiding your actions and decisions. Another powerful habit to adopt is the practice of self-reflection and gratitude. Islam encourages us to constantly reflect on our blessings and be mindful of our actions. Set aside time daily, perhaps after Fajr or before bed, to reflect on your deeds and express gratitude for what you have. This habit helps shift your mindset from dwelling on challenges to appreciating Allah's blessings, promoting contentment and reducing anxiety. When combined with regular repentance, it helps purify the heart and maintain spiritual clarity. Lastly, transform your life by incorporating acts of kindness and charity into your daily routine. Islam teaches the importance of helping others while through financial means, kind words or simple acts of service. Making charity a habit fosters empathy, builds stronger communities and invites barakah into your life. Even small, consistent acts of kindness can transform your heart and create a ripple effect of goodness around you, bringing you closer to living the values of Islam in every aspect of your life. Help us build an Islamic studio at www.islamicstudio.org. Link in the description.